so hi guys welcome to stage two of the a uh, Neil's Granny's Scotch Broth Challenge uh, as I said to you in stage one my granny uh, was a dab hand at making Scotch Broth and uh, neither I nor any other member of my family has ever managed to quite replicate how, how good her soup tasted uh, so it's become a bit of a family challenge to try and uh, make her soup or make scotch broth as good as granny made it and we are inviting you guys into that challenge today so hopefully uh, you've got your scotch broth mix soaked uh, if you didn't do that already you'll need to pop off and do that and come back to this video uh, about half a packet of the scotch broth mix in a bowl of water and left to soak for I think it says 8 to 10 eight hours so effectively that's kind of like overnight uh, and just leave leave that once you've done that the next bit of the prep is it really involves a fair old bit of a vegetable chopping and uh, you might want to a uh, once we've had a quick chat about that you might want to pause the video go and do that and then come back uh, so your prep really is you need a fairly big pan biggest pan in the house essentially uh, something to stir with you'll need a wee bit of oil uh, because we're going to fry up some of the vegetables to soften them up uh, you should have a pack of vegetable stock cubes uh, and you'll need some water for those later on and then we've got a selection of veg here so we have onion chopped up, peeled and chopped up we have uh, the leek which I've taken the outer layer of skin off and then chopped it into sort of fine little circles there uh, I have the turnip or the swede uh, which is <coughs> if you're not sure that's the swede big huge muckle thing uh, and that needs to be peeled and uh, have the outer layer of skin taken off and then I chopped it into fairly small cubes you can go big or small as far as chopping up the veg is concerned uh, obviously some some soups you kind of finish it off by blending it or mashing it up so it all just becomes quite smooth scotch broth isn't like that it's definitely a kind of lumpy soup uh, so if you like your lumpy soup small uh, then chop your veg small because you're not going to be able to do much about it afterwards uh, the potatoes uh, scrubbed and uh, peeled or just scrubbed if the, the skins are in good nick uh, and chopped up fairly smooth for some reason I always peel them when I put them in scotch broth but if I'm making potato and leek soup I, I leave the skins on uh, and then your carrots uh, again just peeled if you prefer or scrubbed and uh, chopped up into wee bits now I was just going to say I wasn't going to make you stand and watch me uh, peel lots of veg but I thought it might be worth just having a quick look at the Swede if you haven't tackled one of those before they are they're pretty pretty hard so a decent size a knife works really well and what you want to do you'll notice that they they usually get when they come off the farm they have like a big a uh, leafy thing so they grow in the ground they've got a big leafy thing coming out of them and before they go to the shops they cut the leaves off the top and then they've got it sort of looks like a chubby carrot really uh, it's got a little kind of tail that comes off into the ground and they cut that off as well so what you get left with is a sort of ball shaped thing uh, and you can actually see if I I cut so what I would normally do is cut a wee bit of the, <coughs> the top and the tail the top and the bottom off uh, to give yourself a bit of a flat surface and I don't know if you can see in there you can actually see there's a bit of a sort of skin 
so maybe about half a centimeter thick <clears throat> uh, and then it sort of changes color slightly and what I normally do to peel, I'm sure there's different ways of doing it, is just get a decent sized knife, work so that your fingers are away from where you're going to be cutting, and just take the knife and just try and cut away that outer layer of different coloured skin. And just kind of work your way down and round. And you can see that by cutting the bottom off, I've got a nice flat surface to work on. My fingers are up and out of the way of where the knife blade is going to be and I can just go round <coughs> and cut. Nothing spoils a session of soup making like a uh, taking the end off one of your own fingers so do be careful And that's you and then if you've got little bits left <coughs> you can just sort of trim that down but that outer skin is pretty tough uh, so you want to get rid of that and then you can just cut again cut big slices hand on the back keep your fingers up and out of the way and just push down <coughs> As my dad used to say when we were sewing wood, just let the tool do the work. So if you've got your knife, don't be hacking at it, just let the sharpness of the blade do the work for you. And tuck away. Right, so that's you with your neat. Once you've got all that done, mm -hmm. if you haven't done that at the moment, then what I'd suggest is hit pause now and I uh, get all that chopped up and then come back to the video. If you've got your veg chopped then what you want to do is get your pan on the heat, put a bit of oil in, a bit of vegetable oil or whatever, uh, we've started using a rapeseed oil quite a lot now it's quite nice uh, you can get it in little uh, which i think is where i'm not sure if that's where that one came from but uh, we usually just get them out a little and it's not expensive uh, and apparently it's quite good for you which is always good so a little bit of heat in the pan a little bit of heat uh, in that oil and then we're going to start by drying up our onions. <coughs> and we're just gradually going to sort of add the veg, the uh, onions first and then the leeks. Just keep moving them about. You want them on a sort of reasonable heat. Uh, you just want this all to soften up but you don't want it to start burning so once you've got the <coughs> once you've got the onions starting to change colour a bit starting to go a little bit yellow and golden. You can add in your leeks. Give them a wee bit of a mix round. Now I'm going to cheat a bit here. We didn't, <coughs> excuse me, we didn't see this in the recipe, but I'm actually going to put in a wee bit of lurk pack, but a little bit of butter or something. Uh, just to add to the flavour uh, around those leeks. Once we've got that happening, we're going to put the carrots in. You don't have to uh, 
to the carrot. So my apologies, I forgot to say uh, the celery goes in at the same time. So celery and carrots in just now. Just going to be letting those all a uh, cook up. I'm trying not to burn my fingers here. I uh, I dismantled the handles off this pan a couple of years ago when we took some of the young people out a uh, camping, and I wanted a big pan to heat beans over an open fire. Uh, and uh, it worked really well, but I lost the handles. Uh, so anytime I use this pan now, I've got to sort of grab it with a claw because uh, otherwise it'd burn my fingers. I don't want that. I also have to make sure that I don't let a cloth dangle into the gas ring, a uh, flame from the gas ring, or you'll see me running about trying not to set our kitchen on fire, which is fun as well. <coughs> so we'll just keep moving that about the pan for a wee bit. get my, let's check which one it is, I like to put the swede in there as well, and just let it move around. I, generally you find when you, when you uh, fry or ro particularly if you roast any kind of vegetables, the, a lot of the kind of the, the flavour changes and you, you get a much nicer, a much more subtle, usually sweet, richer taste in them. And I reckon you get a wee bit of that, see, cloth is burning. A, you get a wee bit of a, of a hint of that if you sort of just fry off a, things like your, your swede in the pot here so you get a slightly a uh, richer taste off it. It doesn't taste the sort of raw veggie in the soup. <coughs> <coughs> Slip that cook off for a wee bit. So I'm actually going to let that simmer away and just keep stirring it for a few minutes. I just to let all those vegetables soften up a little bit and just get that slightly richer flavour out of it. Whew. Right, once we're done with that, <coughs> uh, we're actually pretty much done now. What we're going to do is a uh, pot the potatoes in. We don't really need to sort of cook them off. Um, but I generally don't tend to bother. Just sort of pop them in the mix as well. And you should have a really big pan of veg going on now. Start your soup. And then what we're going to do, once we're happy with that, is water. I I'm 
you're going to want in here, <clears throat> depending on the sizing, if you've got space in the pan, a, then you want probably at least two litres, maybe even three litres of water. A, so you can see in here that my my the vegetables are sort of a, covered with a good layer of water. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drain the water uh, as much as I can out of the broth mix and I'm going to add that in as well. <coughs> so there we go, done that. Uh, you'll probably notice there's a wee bit of kind of a uh, like silt almost in the water just at the end. It's fine if that was in the soup. Uh, it's not a problem. And in this case we're just about maxing out the pan here. Don't need to be quite careful. And we want to add some of our vegetable stock cubes. So we've got, assuming everybody's got the same thing, we've got four vegetable stock cube, a uh, stock pots, uh, and I'm going to start by adding two. Boop, 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 boop. Just give that a wee gentle move around to get the stock cubes right in the, the water. Right, and that's pretty much us for the moment. I, I, you may have noticed I tend not to add salt I, very much to the food. Do put a bit of pepper in. I, I'll need to head off and find our a black pepper, but you can put a little bit of salt black pepper into taste if you want. A, that's absolutely fine. A, and what we're basically going to do now is leave that to simmer for ideally at least an hour. A, just leave that cooking away in the pan, come back and check it every 10-15 minutes. A, just to make sure it's not sticking to the bottom. So every now and again, particularly once it's a once it's boiling, once it's bubbling, a, you just want to make sure that you don't have a lot of stuff sticking to the bottom pan. So give it a wee stir. A, pop the lid on. I'm just looking for my <coughs> lid. <coughs> pop the lid on. <coughs> so I've got the gas up full just now, just to bring it to the boil. As soon as it starts to boil, I'm going to turn that right back down eh, to minimum and just let that simmer away. Eh, essentially, the longer you leave your soup to simmer, the better taste it'll, it'll have. And don't worry if it looks a bit watery eh, just now. The, the broth mix will absorb some of the moisture out of the, the soup eh, that you've just put in. And the potatoes in particular... <coughs> As they start to cook, eh, the starch in the potatoes will come out a little bit and that will help to thicken up your soup as well. If it gets too thick, eh, you can add more water, that's no problem at all. So you can get it to stay the consistency you want. If you like thick soup, it, you can minimise the amount of extra water you put in. If you like your soup a bit thinner, then... Eh, uh, you can just add a little less water and if you need to you can put in another stock pot uh, once you've had a wee taste of it if you want it to have a bit more flavour so you can you can sort of tweak that to suit yourself 
Granny Pratt uh, used to typically make soup that you could dance on, uh, as my dad would say. Uh, but I appreciate not everybody likes that. Uh, so we'll just leave that to cook away. So I'm going to head off and make myself a cup of tea and uh, keep, keep checking your soup and we'll come back to it in about half an hour, 40 minutes and see what it's like. Hi folks, so uh, we've had the soup cooking for about an hour now. Uh, just stirring it every wee while and that is looking pretty good to me. You can see that, or hopefully you can see that instead of looking like sort of coloured water with uh, bits of veg floating in it, uh, it's a much sort of thicker uh, constitution. Everything looks a bit softer, the veg looks softer, like it's started to kind of smoosh up. Particularly the potatoes have kind of broken up a bit as well. Uh, you can check just by sort of pushing things against the edge of the pan there, but yeah, the this what I find is that the swede is usually the thing that cooks that takes the longest to cook. So if you're checking bits of swede, the white stuff, or the sort of light yellow stuff, uh, if it's gone soft, then you're you're good to go in terms of eating it. Uh, and obviously there's always the putting a spoon in and having a wee taste uh, method. Just don't burn your mouth. So, uh, you can leave it going for a little bit longer if you want. Uh, as long as you don't burn it, it's not going to do any harm. Uh, it'll just keep developing flavours. And a uh, second day soup is often the best. But for the moment, I am going to get the ladle out and... Uh, have some of this soup. There we go. Granny Pratt's broth. Right folks, have a go. Let's see what you come up with.